Well, welcome back to the channel, guys and girls. I've been doing this YouTube stuff for one year, almost exactly, plus or minus a couple of days, and it's been absolutely fantastic. And I wanna thank every one of you subscribers, everybody that watches my videos, everybody that comments and gives thumbs up. I know right now is a hard time to watch videos because everybody's out hunting and I'm still out fishing. So, uh, thank you very much. We went from 5,000 subscribers to 12,100 as of this morning. And uh, that's fantastic in one year. That's the biggest jump I've ever had. Today, we're back on the Pemi Jawasset River up here in New Hampshire, which is exactly where I fished the first time I was full time. So uh, I just found it fitting that we we're gonna do that again. And uh, we have our lovely sponsor video today by Postfly. Let's see what's in the box. Let's see what's in the box. Stomp it out. We had a really good uh, fly box full of flies as always, and this is the guide box, and you can use Bend to 10 for a discount. One of these fly tins, which are pretty sweet. I might put those in there. Might not, I don't know yet. A uh, post fly uh, reel cover. Nine foot leader, which I might pop on. I need, do need a new leader. Tells you what all the flies are. A little slip telling you what all the flies are and meet your tire, which is great. I might throw on the uh, Beadhead Golden Brown Hothead, because we're gonna be doing some brown trout stuff in here today. Price list, the normal uh, little packet here that has a bunch of good information in it. Real case, all that fun stuff, and how to read the water. And then we have an awesome Cuddy Post Fly sticker, which is gonna go right there. Bang, and we got a lanyard, which is fantastic. So I don't know if we're gonna catch any trout here today, but at least we'll catch probably something, maybe a fall fish or a smallie or something like that. But I'm gonna try to talk through how I read the water and why I'm casting and where I'm casting. So kind of like a how-to video today, um, because fall fishing is picking up right now. So let's cast right away here. And since I have a white woolly bugger on, like I always do, should be easy to see if there's any fish in the area. And I want to cast in any of these even slightly slower areas, just any of them, really. Because there could be fish anywhere. I'm always, always surprised in where I find fish, especially early in the morning. We're at a little late start here, but we're kind of in a... Uh, a little canyon here because of the dam, so we're not seeing any sunlight quite yet. We will in a little bit here. And I'm always just gonna throw up there, rip that white woolly bugger up and around as much as possible. And if nothing bites there, I'm gonna cross the stream kind of right in front of me. That's my plan, or I might try to hop along those rocks. I think I found this a little too sketchy last year, but we'll try it down there anyways. And pretty much every river I've ever been to, from here to Alaska, has some sort of bait fish minnow in it that's either silver or white. That's what I'm trying to, I'm trying to match here. If I was a fish, I'd be right in this seam right here. And I'm just gonna try the woolly bugger for a little while. And then I'll switch over to probably a mop fly. That's what worked well here last year. So there is some stock browns in here. I feel like that line goes right there. So can't really fish above that. And with a woolly bucket, there's really no wrong way to fish it. So I can actually swing this upstream end. And I have 5X tippet on right now. It's a little light for a streamer. Uh, so I'm using a polymer knot to tie that on because a normal clinch knot is, will not hold, no pun intended, 
on that thin a line. Camera wasn't rolling, of course, but I do have a little rainbow on. It was tangled up on my line. I was letting that streamer swing downstream here in this wash while I was walking forward. And sure enough, there's a little bow. Wet your hands. This water's cold. Hook's already spit because I didn't get a hook set. But there he goes. Nice. First fish of the day. Oh, no, 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 no. And now we're tangled. Let's see if I can get another one out of that same pattern there. So I'm casting into the still water. My hands are already cold here. And I would probably pick up a lot more nymphing, but I'm not switching over yet. And that was just basically dangling down there while I was walking forward, trying not to fall in. Don't, not, don't underestimate this big flat water out right here. There's definitely fish under there. They have to be aggressive enough to come up and hit a streamer while it's running. Um, using an indicator over there is going to be a little tricky because I have a, a different seam in front of me, but I will switch over to that a little bit. I feel like I just saw a fish in there. And what I can do with this is I can uh, whip that out there upstream men. That sends my fly down just a little bit more. And I'm going to let it swing all the way down here. Salmon love that and rainbows love that. I haven't got a lot of browns in the swing. But I can also fish this stuff on the way back here. So let's uh, give a couple more strips. Let's cast right behind that rock real quick so I can get it from a different angle. That was a bad cast. And uh, behind rocks can be good, but not always. And I'm using an eight and a half foot four weight, which is my go-to rod. I like to fish uh, pretty light tippets, so it gives me a lot of tippet protection. The other thing I can do, since I have such a light tippet on, is I can Euro nymph it right through this whitewash here. This is not one of my woolly buggers, so it's not super heavy. But I can drift it right through there and see if I can pick up any fish that are in the whitewash. They don't like to be in there, but they will be in there, especially if they feel like it's protecting them from predators. Oh, there's one right there. Oh, and he's off. Dang it. Let's work our way down just because we're using the, the white woolly. And even though we just fished this, fishing it from a different angle can present a fly in a different direction, in a different way. It can act a little bit more natural sometimes. So even we try to fish behind this rock here, got to keep fishing everywhere. That's why I love, 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 love the woolly bugger. And I love being perched up high. You get to see the fish bite. Um, if you're fishing over spooky fish, I suggest not doing that, but these really aren't that spooky. Mainly because the sun's not up yet, which always helps. And I don't think you guys can see this, but there's a giant rock flat here and the channel's out that way. So I want to cast out into where that seam is out there. Slow down my cast a little bit, open it up. And kind of strip in, that's where I was finding them last year. And I would not be surprised if I picked up a couple of fall fish today, which I might keep for laker bait. I'm not 100% sure yet. I don't know if I have a stringer in my in my bag with me today. I don't normally have one. Running out of back casting room here, so I'm gonna step in the water gracefully. So water is getting pretty deep over here, so I'm gonna let that fly sink just for a little bit longer. And what's nice about this is I like to put an indicator on there and fish it under an indicator with no problem, because you can drift a woolly bugger because it just acts like a stunned minnow. 
cast it upstream and if it's really fishy I will fish fast enough so I'm always tight to my fly. Uh, that way I'll get downstream hits. Especially like right here. Tip in the water, prevent line swing. And I'll just cast that, strip that back as fast as I can. And there's some slower water downstream here that I will switch over to nymphs here in a minute. Why is that? I haven't gotten any. Uh... Oh, see what that bird's doing right there? That bird's picking off stuff hatching on the surface. It's always a good sign. Sending some downstream mens into that fly, letting it sink. I'm not sure how long my leader is. It's not very long. Just kind of dead drifting that. Rod tip down. And that last little sling down there. I can see that fly from here and that's almost a full color out. So that's over 30 feet away. I don't expect any fish to be up in these shallow rocks first thing or this time of day, maybe early in the morning for sure. But we're at almost nine o'clock here and I'm not spooking any minnows or anything. So be rare to see a big fish up here. Doesn't mean I'm not spooking them, especially the way that I'm falling here. Covered in bird shit. Now, I don't think fish will be in this fast spot, but what I want to do is cast into the fast and let it swing into the slow current like a, like a minnow it would be flushed down if it was spooked. And what it's going to do is get flushed down and spooked and it's going to settle into the slower water and that's where you'll get your bites. Now this spot right here is about one foot per second speed wise. So it's a very good spot to fish for trout. They don't like to be in super fast stuff, but they like to be where the food is. So I'm gonna fish that seam in front of me. I'm gonna tighten up my drag a little bit here. Prevent that from overspinning. Cast in there a couple times with this and then I'm gonna to switch to a nymph rig, which won't take me much. Because there's a nice dark spot over there. I don't know if that's clouds or if that's uh, deeper water. Probably both. I definitely caught some fish in here last year. All right, let's switch. And we're gonna go with a bright green mop fly that I tie uh, that has tungsten bead on it, big tungsten bead, and a peacock curl. And we're gonna do a bunch of laps of uh, clinch knot here. Wet it, cinch it down. Grab onto the hook and we're gonna test it. That's cinching that knot a little bit more. And since I was Euro nymphing style with this last time, we're gonna, I had, I left my tags on as a visual. We're gonna cut those off so those fish might actually see that, those tags hanging off there and make it a little obvious. And since the glare is pretty bad today, I'm gonna start off with a uh, bright pink indicator. We're gonna start with that indicator pretty high up and then work our way down. We don't wanna just put it on there super deep and lose it the first freaking cast, which is what people, a lot of people do. Like, oh, I'm gonna go by the one and a half times the depth rule, and then they lose a fly immediately, and then they spend more time tying. I'd rather inch it down, because the fish will come up to it, but they won't always pick it off the rocks, you know what I mean? So right down there is a, too bad of a drift. So I'm gonna get right up in here Keep my fly line above the water. 
do a mend. I'm not ticking bottom, but I know I'm very close to the bottom. And I'm gonna try in that fast seam over there. Keep my line mend up and above it. You can see that it's floating naturally. And this is like a really, really good stretch for a bunch of trout or even fall fish to hang out. It's nice and flat. We're at the end of a tail end of a skinny pool. And then even with this, we can swing it at the end of the pool, the ripple, and see if there's fish down there. And what I like to do is cast in front of me and then work my way out, but I kind of already messed that up. Otherwise, you're lining your fish with your fly line. I wish I could get to the other side there. I'm sure if I could if I try. And even these little side pools here, the sun's out now, but I've had big fish be in this little shallow stuff. So see this right here? So there's a uh, fast flowing water, a rock slow behind it, and then there's another like little flat spot behind it. We're definitely gonna cast right there. Just got a few more juicy looking spots in front of us here. Try to drift through those. What I'm doing now is I'm just shaking my line out so it gets a more natural drift so I don't have to pull my line out. And I can just lob that thing up there and let it do its thing. And ideally we don't want to be fishing upstream from our indicator, but this is just going to allow me to see if there's any fish down in that direction before I walk down there. Ideally I'd be fishing upstream, but I don't. Most of the places I fish, for some reason, the parking spot, oh, that could have been a fish, is uh, at the head of the stream. Got to try over there. Have to, have to, have to. Yep, that's a fish. That's a bigger fish. Whatever that is. Just see you running. Thank you. Ah, that's not a big fish. So I think it's a fall fish. About time I caught one though. One of those New Hampshire silver. What is New Hampshire silver trout? Now those are called fall fish and they literally hang out in the exact same locations that trout do. Uh, they're super fun to catch, but super annoying. They'll hit dry flies too, which is kind of cool. And also kind of anno annoying because they're not the best uh, at taking dry flies. I think this is another one. Yep. And they fight pretty hard for what they are, which is great lake trout bait. You stop it. But they have a slightly angled downwards face and he's pooping all over me, so I'm gonna let him go. I would not be surprised that one of these casts actually holds a trout on it. So I'm going to keep casting over there. Might have to lower my indicator down because it looks fairly deep over there. And uh, fall fish will hit a strip fly, a floating fly, pretty much everything. That's what makes them kind of annoying because they act just like trout.
don't know if that was a fish or not. It's another one, I think. And they fight pretty hard. They get huge, by the way. They get to like 24 inches or something like that. And there seems to be a bunch of them right over there. And I don't really think they care about the drift. The trout do, so I'm going to try to keep a, a good drift. Man. Man. Downstream man. See, I'm not going properly down over there. Every once in a while, you'll twitch it like that, and a fish will take it anyways. Let's pull the line in, and we're going to move the indicator up, which will bring that fly down more. So I have to open up my cache just a little bit more to allow time for that the pendulum around. And this will give me a little bit longer drift here. Oh, that could have been a bite. Oh, I don't know if that was or not. Line out of the water first, then cast. Line out of the water first. Too much line out. I'm going to cast over there. I'm going to take a few steps down. So now I can get a good downstream drift. My fly line is now in the seam. So it's going the same speed as my indicator. Which is good. Apparently I cleared out all the uh, fall fish, which is also good. Just did a little roll cast in there, and that's kind of just mending the line in that direction. I don't know how fast the current is going over there really. Not fast enough it looks like. And we're not going to fish any of this still water here so I'm going to reel up. We're going to move my indicator back down towards the fly. So wherever I fish next doesn't get snagged. So we got fast current here and we got slow current here and then we have a drop. Of course, that slide looks the best, but we're going to fish this slow current seam right here first. And since there's a lot of slime on these rocks, I just got hung up and I felt like I got a tug. So we're going to pull that seaweed off there or moss, whatever it is. Make sure that hook is nice and clean. And I'm stepping upstream because the gla sun glare is so bad I can't see my indicator. Sure, it's worse for you guys. I don't know if that's bottom or not. Try a little bit in the faster current here. A little too fast, a little too shallow. nothing in multiple drifts so we're going to move on and we have this rock right here with a flat next to it or like a kind of a tail out a back eddy and then another current seam so we're going to fish all the way over to the other current seam where I can get a good drift a little shallow sometimes fish will be right at the tail And I have faith in, in the fly, so most of the time I will change, change the way I'm doing things before I change my fly.
a little bit better, a little less hot. What's happening last time is there was a bunch of trout in here. And they would come up and see me and then ski daddle. So what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna take a couple steps back, take off my indicator. All right, got a woolly bugger on again. One that's heavy and sinks. Oh, I just got hit. Dang it. That's what they were doing last time too. Well guys, thank you very much for watching. As always, you can get the uh, Bandit 10 link below get your uh, 10 bucks off your first purchase from Postfly. They're a great sponsor of the channel and uh, they've been part of it for the last, I don't know, feels like four or five months now. So they've been a great part. Uh, I've caught a lot of fish on their flies and their setups and their leaders, so that's great. Uh, hope you guys learned something. Caught one rainbow off camera, another rainbow flipped off, and then those uh, three or four fall fish. I didn't think I was gonna hammer the trout here today. I think they fall stock it. I'm not 100% sure. So I might go try somewhere else, but if not, Thanks for watching.